sinners, welcome to another Tuesday evening edition of the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, I'm your host, not host, host, Kale Henderson. This is, as always, our Tuesday evening edition. I did take a break last week. It was Halloween. Had to do what we had to do, man. Uh, uncle stuff. A lot of fun. Um, Halloween's my favorite holiday. By the way, in the chat, what'd you guys do for Halloween? Did you party? Did you take kids out? Did you hand out candy? What were the coolest costumes you saw this this, this Halloween? My favorite Halloween by my, my favorite holiday by far. I'm your host, Kale Henderson. This is the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Taryn Rodriguez and Larry B in the chat here. If you guys want to get at us on our Twitter forums, get at us on Twitter at Sin City underscore IESR at Kale underscore Henderson, which is my personal bring talk all things Vegas sports to review the show at any time, any, any any place. Check out the Spreaker podcast app, Spotify, um, Spotify, Apple pods, Google pods, Google podcasts, because because spot. Yeah, Spotify is the big one. I I, I'll tell you what, I feel like the sound quality is best in Spotify. My my best friend, Max, he, he listens to us all the time. He loves listening to our Raiders. He usually loves hearing me bash the Raiders. Um, and, and he does it on Spotify. We have a good time with that. So you guys, yeah, review the show. We're, if you miss an episode, hit us up. Always reach out. I will I will come back to you, man. I will reply. That's what I do. This is part of the show. We're investing into it. Now, now that football is over, high school football, I should say, there will be more time to invest in the show. If you guys haven't noticed, there's been way more social media content. Um, there, there's definitely been more tweets. Um Definitely just been more live since uh, the football season ended and priorities are on the show, family. Next week, we have a Tuesday show. The following week, I will be in Utah visiting family. Um, some of them probably for the last time, unfortunately. But that, that's just kind of the way life is. And you got you to gotta take that family time and, and do the Thanksgiving stuff. But for the next today and next week, we got full shows for an hour. And I can't wait to get on, get on to it. Um with that said, I want to talk to you guys about the the Las Vegas Lady Aces because the Las Vegas Lady Aces, as you guys know, repeated right two time defending champs, two time. And we talked about this. We talked this about this over a year ago. I said that these girls would win it again. I said that I've called the last two years of championships. I have no problem saying, I think they can win it for a third straight year. All of your core players. Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum, uh, Aja Wilson, Aja Wilson being basically the finals MVP for the last two seasons. They're all on the right side of 30, man. They're all in their prime. You don't see any serious injuries. When you have a big three or a core three like that, it's huge. Um, on top of that, Chelsea Gray, which is probably the best fourth person or fourth man or fourth woman, pardon me, in the WNBA, she scores a ton of points, too. So they have a lot of upside. There are free agents, though. And, and listen, man, every time you win, you're going to see some free agents leave. That's just the way it is. And you're going to see people get paid because, unfortunately, that's just the, the nature of the game, man. If you play well and you do well and you're a team player and, and you're a contributor to championships, in this case, a lot of people had to contribute to make this happen. Dude, I mean, let, let's be real. People got to get paid. The ladies got to get paid. Um, so, you know, Kelsey Plum, Aja Wilson, uh, Jackie Young, all of them are are big pieces to the puzzle. And they've all been extended. They're good for a couple of years. Chelsea Gray, I believe she just signed an extension. So your core four, I should say, are good to go. What I would say and what I would caution to the Lady Aces is this. You are, you will have uh, roughly, they will have roughly five free agents this year, and all of them helped in one, one way, shape, or form. Um, what I would say is this. Kaya Stokes is one that I think that they really need to look into bringing back. She's 30, okay? She didn't really deal with injury issues. She's got seven years of experience. It's all good. She played 40 games last year, uh, about 19.8, 20 minutes a game, roughly, uh, the big stat was roughly eight rebounds a game. Eight rebounds per game. That's more than Candace Parker averaged at 
Kaya Stokes is to me helped Kelsey Plum help get the ball back in Kelsey Plum's hands more often. Extra possessions. And that's what you need in basketball. You need more chances. And the better you are on the board, especially on the defensive end or on the offensive end as well, um, the more chances you're going to get. I think the Lady Aces just really have to lean on that, man. I would get Kaya Stokes back. Um, they're saying that her average salary was $81,000. That's just, I mean, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure meals are taken care of and everything like that, just like, you know, other pro sports. But like $81,000 to live in Vegas. I don't know, man. She'll get a bump. I'm sure she'll get, into, you know, maybe $100,000, maybe two years, $200,000, something like that, $100,000 a piece. But you want this big lady. You want her coming back. Um, it, it would make a huge difference. And I think the experience matter. And then while you have this core four together, you really need to maximize the roster talent. I know that one, the last, last I checked, actually, let's just go ahead and look at over the cap. Actually, we're in spot rack. We can do that. Cap tracker. Um, the Lady Aces cap space coming up is $512,000. I would spend all of that. You are missing five people. Every one of them are like, when you look at the average salary, like $81,000, $51,000, like you could go out and get legitimate players for one year at $100,000. Five players to replace all of those that are that are team players, that, that can get it done, that have tread left on the tires. You can get each one of them for $100,000 a piece on a one-year deal to come in and play on a loaded Las Vegas Aces roster where those players that they bring in will likely win a championship, be a part of a championship team, one that's to three-peat, be a part of history. Um, there's a lot of selling points. I think they could go out, even with the five people that they're losing, they could bring in five personalities at $100,000 a piece with their cap space and really do some damage again this year. Unbelievable damage. The Lady Aces have been absolutely dominant. They Hats off to them. Um, they're all in. And, and that is a pun. All good. But they're two-time two they're, they're defending champ. Two-time defending champs. I think they'll be a three-time when we're talking this time next year. I truly believe that. Um, I don't see any other team in the WNBA that has a core like the Lady Aces does. And it would take a grave injury, I think, for that to change drastically. I'm not wishing that on anybody. I wouldn't want that on anybody. I'm just being realistic with you guys. It would take a grave injury for teams, for the gap between the Aces and the rest of the WNBA to really close. That's how dominant the Lady Aces are. They deserve it. Again, $512,000 in cap space. You have five unrestricted free agents leaving from last year. You guys already know. Pardon me. You guys already know my thoughts on it. I personally believe... That Kaya Stokes should be brought back. Bring her back on a one-year $100,000 deal. You can't tell me she won't take it. It's about twenty grand more than what she made last year. Right? Eight rebounds a game. Then bring four more people in at about $100,000 a year. Let them know, hey, we're on, our, we're on the verge of winning a third championship. Do you want to be a part of it or not? It's that simple, man. It's a selling point. And I know this because I'm in sales for a living. You have a great culture, a great environment. You're winning. You're in Vegas. Your money goes much further in Vegas than a lot of other places because there's no state income tax. Those are the facts, man. Those are the facts. But that core four is there. Take advantage of it while you can. We're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, we're going to roll into the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Las Vegas Golden Knights are absolutely killing it, man. They're on a roll right now. Um, this season uh, first in the Pacific Division I'd be shocked if they're not really first in NHL standings overall but we'll, we'll touch base on that when we get back here on the Sin City Sports Show presented by IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports Hello sports fans it's me your boy Larry B and I want to walk you through the world of sports no 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 not just the mainstream major TV deal type sports, although those are important too. But let me be your guide for your journey of all sports, from college to the pros, the minors, and everything in between. Each week, we are talking sports galore with true diehards just like you from a hardcore fan's perspective that's sure to quench your thirst around leagues you may know all too well and some you may even discover here. That's right, sports fans. 
If you love sports of all kinds, enjoy hearing amazing sports stories and respect all sports because you know how difficult any of them can be to play or compete in, then this is your show. Join me, your boy Larry B, on the defining moment each week here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports, and let the sports come to you. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Football fans, this is me, your boy Larry B, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head primetime face offs each week. You don't want to miss it. Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Kel Henderson. You guys can get at us on our Twitter forums, at Twitter, at Sin City underscore IESR, at Kale underscore Henderson is our personals. You guys can catch the replay of the show if you don't quite hear all of the live show on Spreaker, Apple Pods, Spotify, Google Pods, the, the, those are the four big ones that I can tell you guys. You can go back and listen to any show. Sound quality is great. Spreaker, I don't know, up and down, but they still do a pretty good job. Um, on top of that, you can just support our forum, our platform, which is IE Sports Radio. For the last nine years, IE Sports Radio has brought to you has brought you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IE Sports Radio at IE Sports Radio on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, 
and TikTok to keep up with the latest in sports with our shows. Also check out our website, iesportsradio.com. In sport, for sports news, IE Sports Radio blog, our Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month pages dedicated to each podcast on our network, our IE Sports Radio community forum, and stop by the store and check out the latest merch. Thank you for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. Started the show with the Lady Aces. We're transitioning over to another winning team, which is the Golden Knights. Um, before we do that, we got to talk to our... Listeners or the people chiming in the chat, Larry B, what's up, Raiders? Yeah, Victory Tuesday, baby. You can't be mad at that. Victory Tuesday is always a good Tuesday. Doesn't matter if it's ugly or, or dominant like like the other day. I know it was the Giants. I get that, but it, it looked like a different team, and it it was fun to watch. It was a, it was a good change, good change. Uh, Tanner Rodriguez, good evening, Kale. Have an awesome show. Thank you. Raider Nation can breathe clean air. I I believe so, man. I think. You guys have heard me the last year and a half. I think the headache is 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 probably allevi- alleviating, uh, alleviating itself. But the problem is there's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done, and it's not going to be easy. So hopefully um, there's patience. Hopefully Champ Kelly can do that if he's the guy that's appointed or whoever brings it up. We'll talk about that and the potential here uh, upcoming. He said the Golden – uh, Taron Rodriguez also said the Golden Knights are looking great as always, but how do they lose the Ducks in regulation when they were up 2 nothing? Us as Ducks fans coming out of hiding. Yeah, it, well, Ducks are 7-4. and four. Um, It's been a while since we've seen a winning record from the Ducks in general. I think the Pacific Division is just super deep. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are not going to skate through this division easily this year. Unless, you know, especially, listen, father time catches up to everybody. I don't wish for any injuries. We talked about it last year. If the Duck, I said this last year before the season started. If the Golden Knights stay healthy, they were going to be a contender. They would probably win it all. They did. They stayed healthy. They played the ultimate team hockey. Hashtag ultimate team hockey. Adam, you can tell me if I'm lying. Um, I, I've, I've noted this on the show a couple times, and I'll say it again for those that may not know. Um, there wasn't a single player on the Vegas Golden Knights that scored 100 points last year, meaning 100 points, uh, which you, for you laymen out there or, or you hockey noobs, a point is scored if you score a goal. A point is scored if you have an assist. Those are point. Those go to your point total. It's not uncommon to see 100 point players on a yearly basis, especially your top players on the top teams. The Golden Knights were a top team all last year. They didn't have a single 100 point player. They had multiple players over 70, multiple players over 60. And here's the other astronomical stat: they scored 4.3 point, uh, 4.3 goals per game. That was second in the NHL. But they don't have a 100 point scorer. That is ultimate team hockey at its finest. That means they are distributing the wealth. That means everybody's stepping up. They're doing their job. They're doing they're doing their assignment, um, and they're they're winning their battles, man. And that's what matters. To answer your question, Taryn, how did how did the Golden Knights lose to the Ducks? It's pretty simple. You know, Aiden Hill wasn't in goal. Granted, it's the first loss in regulation period this year, um, but but Aiden Hill, who was the you know the star of last year's playoffs, next to Marsha Salt and I don't know, um, Jack Eichel and, and then boys, Mark Stone. I mean, there's so many players you could name, but Aiden Hill just didn't allow many goals last year in the playoffs. He stood on his head, and what I mean is, like, the guy was basically handstanding and stopping pucks left and right, and he, that's what earned him his big contract this offseason. Um, but Aiden Hill is 6-0-1 as the starter this year. Logan Thomas is 5-1-0, and uh, Logan Thomas – and it's kind of a stifling difference when you look at their statistics. Aiden Hill's got a uh, – so this is close. Th- these are close, by the way. Aiden Hill has a 93.8% save percentage, which is incredible, by the way. It's young into the season, but that Aiden, Aiden Hill, is that's incredible. Um, Logan Thompson, which is the backup, and it's not a bad backup to have. And when you look at the totals, the Golden Knights have played 13 games. Aiden Hill's played seven. Logan Thompson's played six. So they're doing a really good job of splitting time to keep these guys healthy all year. Love that. When they get to the meat and bones of the season, I'm sure Aiden Hill will take more starts. But as of right now, I think they're doing a great job of evening out time. Um, Logan Thompson has a 92.3% save percentage. I get that that doesn't sound like a big difference in hockey or statistically when the margin of error is like centimeters of ice, um, pun intended. That's kind of a big difference in save percentage. It really is. Like we're talking about 
that's like saving five or six more shots. Because goalies see a lot of shots per game. I would say 30 plus on average. And that's not uncommon, right? Especially from good teams. Thompson just played, you know, he played well until he didn't. And I don't I don't fault him for that. I mean, look look at the Raider, look at sorry, look at the Golden Knights schedule. I mean, they they've gone their overall record is 11-1 one, and 1. They're by far first place in the division by a couple of games. Um, to be exact, they're up by four points. So yeah, two games to be exact, uh, which is great. That's that's a good Vancouver man. They're killing it. Uh, L.A. Kings seven wins. Anaheim seven wins. I mean, dude, those are your top four teams. Those are the, I mean those those could be teams that are battling it out at the end of the year. I totally see Seattle, you know, kicking ass and taking names towards the end of the season too, because they that team looks like they're just too deep to to fail. But um, look at look at the uh, Golden Knights win record, right? They literally won. Let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight to start the season. And it was pretty dominant. With the exception of two games, it was pretty dominant, right? Like the first three games were four to one was the result. Literally, it was 12 goals to three goals allowed uh, the first three games. They were un- they were unreal. Um, lost to the Blackhawks four to three. That was unfortunately at home. But when you go on an eight-game win streak or seven-game win streak, you're going to drop one sooner or later. If you're going to drop one, it might as well be that. Uh, beat the Kings again, Pacific Division rival. Um, they're currently in in third place in the Pacific Division. You want to beat those teams. You got to prioritize that. Canadians, Jets, Avalanche. So basically, they went on a seven game streak to start, lost one. They went on a four game streak again. The most, I mean, the most astonishing stat is they beat the Avalanche seven nothing. Like the Avalanche are a really good hockey team. And the Golden Knights just spanked him. Uh, beat the Jets 5-2. Canadians was close 3-2. Um, yeah, I mean, the reality is I think I think the Golden Knights are the best team in the NHL right now. They lost to the Ducks. It's not a big deal. Like, again, that first loss to the Blackhawks was, in shoot- was a shootout. Uh, Ducks regulation. Yes, you were up 2-0. They came back and scored four goals. Realistically, it was three unanswered. And then... Uh, they got an empty netter at the end of the game. Not a not a huge deal, and it was against Logan Thompson. It wasn't even against the starter. So, I, I I totally foresee Aiden Hill kind of taking majority of the starts by the end of the year. Probably 60% of them if they're going to keep up with this rotation. Sooner or later, he's going to start taking a few more starts in a row. But uh, overall, I mean, Golden Knights are just they're lights out, man. They're kicking ass. They're taking names. They play 13 games. Their goalies are split well. Um, the statistics are pretty well split. Um, you got, you know, William Carlson is leading with points and goals right now. Uh, he's got 15 points, six goals. So he's got nine assists. I mean, he's absolutely destroying or, or, or shredding the ice. Jack Eichel's right, right behind him with six goals, eight assists. So he's right behind him. Mark Stone, four goals, eight assists. Uh, Shea Theodore, three and nine. For defensive men, Shea Theodore d- does work. Braden McNabb, again, seven and seven. I think that's impressive. Uh, sorry, no no goals, seven assists, so he's got seven points. Uh, March Assault hasn't really gotten things going yet, but he's got six goals. So from a scoring end, he's great. Uh, from the assists aspect, he's always going to be lacking there. But again, look at this. Look at these numbers, man. You got one, two, three players on this Golden Knights team that have scored six goals already on the season. That's incredible, man. Um, Ivan Barbashev is quietly having a good start to the year. He's got four goals. But yeah, Mark Stone four and eight. Say Theodore three and nine. Uh, Stevenson Chandler Stevenson two and eight. And then you got Jordan March Assault six and three. I mean, you, you got guys that are all all of these guys that I just told you or, or said their name out loud are, are in double digit points already this season. This team is dominant, man, and they're playing against good teams. I don't care what anybody says. The Pacific is tough. It is. It is. A, a, it's going to be a fight. On a week-to-week basis, I fully believe that it's going to be a fight on a week-to-week basis. Um, so yeah, William Carlson is currently leading. Jack Eichel's right behind him. I just think as long as those top six guys that I just named off, those guys continue to get the workload. If those guys continue to play solid hockey and and do what they're supposed to be doing, I, there's no reason why they can't be a deep team again this year. And and then when you look at Here's the other thing. When you look at how your 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 goalie's playing, again, 93% save percentage, 93.8. It might as well be 94. If you're if you're a math teacher, you're rounding up to 94%. 
six wins, zero losses. Um, he's only allowed, you know, goals against. He's only allowed 13 goals this season in seven games. Less than two per game. Um, yeah, 210 saves. Incredible, man. Incredible. Shots against are 210. Sorry. Saves are 197. Still, 197 to 13. You can't, you can't be mad at that. Um, yeah. Fun. Fun team to watch. They're playing really hard. And the fans are going nuts. T-Mobile Arena is nuts. I'm telling you, man. I don't know. Vegas, it's it's turning into a title town. It's turning into a really, really popular sports town. We do have a Major League Baseball team coming. That seems to be getting finalized, so that's good. Um, but overall, I mean, if you had to lean one way, I, I think it's a hockey town right now. Who would have thought? With the Raiders coming to town. Are the Raiders the most popular attraction? Sports-wise, yes. Yes. Um, the franchise valuation says what it needs to say. Um, but the Golden Knights, I think, are the popular show. I think the Golden Knights are the, are, the, are the favorite team as of right now. They've been there longer. They win every single year. Um, a lot of games. So I, I, I think Vegas has really fallen in love with them. When you look in the stands, you see a lot of gold jerseys, dude. A lot of fun. These guys... It, and I, I can't remember who I was. Uh, it was on, I was on Twitter last year, and you had some Dallas Stars fan chime in saying Vegas fans are horrible. They don't even understand hockey. Like they're not even really appreciating what the Golden Knights are doing. Dude, I, I don't see that at all. When I look at our fans, they're going nuts, and they're supportive, and it's fun to watch. It's fun seeing that place just go ape shit whenever they do something great, like put up nine goals in a championship game. I don't know. Fun to watch. We're going to go to a quick break. Got a few more drops to play with my team for our teammates here at IE Sports Radio. When we get back, we're going to dive right into the Raiders. Josh McDaniels was fired. I don't know who called it. Me. Uh, about a year ago, me. I, I, I won't even be cool about it. Josh McDaniels was fired. We're going to dive into that, what led to it. Um, my thoughts on the situation. Antonio Pierce was brought on. My thoughts on him. And, uh, you know, expectations for the rest of the season, right? The remaining schedule and expectations. I think it's really important to have those conversations as, as a show. you got a lot of people that are hyped up about the win against the Giants. I want to bring us down to earth a little bit. Appreciate what happened on, on Sunday, but I need everybody to understand there's still a lot of room to grow on this team, and we're going to address it here when we get back on the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunderous Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hockey fans, I'm Adam Kernan. And I'm Zach Puplis. Together, we are the newest version of Hockey Talk on IE Sports Radio, The Neutral Zone. Zone, 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 zone. We love hockey, but we also know it's not everyone's first sport. So we want to make this show as much for new fans as for the diehards. Whether you can name all the Swedes on the 08 Red Wing Stanley Cup team, or if you can't tell if Varlamov is a goalie or the latest trendy vodka, we're here to help. With facts, figures, and outrageous fans, we bring you all the hard-hitting hockey news you can handle while still keeping it fun and on the rails. Well, mostly. So tune in every week as we go around the hockey world from college to Canada, the minors and the majors, and everywhere in between. So bring your sellies. And your one-timers. Your wicked wristas. And be sure to protect your five-hole. 
Catch the Neutral Zone every week on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We promise not to pick on the Arizona Coyotes every episode. <laughs> and welcome back to, from the break. This is Cal Henderson with the Sin City Sports Show presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I got to give a shout out to those boys, man. They do a great job over there um, with the neutral zone. I used to host the show. I think they do a way better job than I did with Nico Green. I mean, Nico and I had a great chemistry um, when we talked talkie. We did a great job talking about it. But, man, um, I, I love their drop. It's the best one in IE Sports Radio. I have no problem saying that. I really love the neutral zone. Really love what Adam does over there. And I'm really happy for him, man. I know he's he's a busy guy, kind of like I was. He's got multiple kids. He's, he's got two shows. Hats off to him. He's a team player. Um, love Adam. Taryn chimes in the chat. Las Vegas has two professional volleyball teams, the Las Vegas Ramblers and the of the NBA and the Las Vegas volleyball team. They don't have a name quite yet in the Pro Volleyball Federation which starts January of 2024. So, multiple teams. All right. Vegas has attracted one more pro, uh, one extra pro volleyball team. That's pretty cool. That's pretty damn badass. I I mean, I'm sure it has something to do with the the Ramblers' success and sustainability the last few years. But, yeah. Yeah, Adam, duh, dude. You and Taryn are, are the best teammates, dude. Larry's great. He's very supportive. Um, couldn't ask for better teammates and you guys are the ones that always tune in. So I really appreciate you guys, man. Really appreciate you guys. Can't tell you enough. You guys are great teammates. Um, and you, Adam Karnick should be a little thrilled. I mean, you got, I think you got a, I think you got a quarterback on your hands, dude. As long as they don't screw him up and they, they play to the strengths of the bears, which is run the football and set up play action. I like tea bags. I like Tyler Badgett, Tyson Badgett. I really do. I really do. Um, he had a rough game against the Saints, but a lot of a lot of quarterbacks do because the Saints defense is so damn good. Some of that I think is the situation that he was put in. Um but overall I think Tyson Bajan has, has been fun to watch. So happy for you, man. Happy for you. Uh with that said, we gotta dive into to, to more great news. Again, it's Victory Tuesday. And if you guys want to listen to our show again, go to the Spreaker Podcast app. Go to Spotify. Go to Google Podcasts. Go to Apple Pods. Check out the Sin City Sports Show on there to catch any replay so you guys don't miss a show. Don't miss a beat. And then reach out to me, man. Talk to me. I'll reply. Always. Always willing to listen to IE Sports Radio family um, and have conversations with them because it's a lot of fun. Raiders amid a tumult- another tumultuous week because that's what Raiders do. Um <laughs> It's just something we're used to seeing is drama with the Raiders, right? They just can't seem to get it right. Here's the real, here's the reality. Um, Josh McDaniels was was relieved of duties. It was, uh, I think it was like Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. Last Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. Um, following a, a really bad loss to the Lions. And listen, I say it's really bad, but the Lions are a better team. He, the Lions are a better team. I 100% agree with that. I thought they should have won. But I will say it's not like they didn't give the Raiders chances to win the game. Like the Lions were trying to give the the game away with their turnovers and their inconsistencies. Um, and the Raiders just didn't capitalize. Jimmy G just couldn't get it done. <laughs> that's the reality, man. And I think that's been the theme of this year. Um, the last two games against the Bears, against the um, uh, Lions, were, were, were pretty embarrassing against two you know, one was a decent team. The Bears are not a good team. Like, that's the reality. They are, they're getting better, man. You, you can tell that their game plan is we're going to punch people in the face moving forward, and I think it's going to win them some games. Hopefully not too many because it might get them out of the uh, top five sweepstakes. But if you have your quarterback, I mean, you have two guys that can really compete next year. Why not? I mean, I'd, I'd let Tyson and, and Justin go at it and figure out who's going to win. If Justin doesn't get the job, guess what? Trade him. It doesn't matter if it's pennies on the dollar. Just trade him, man. Get Get some value. Build around Tyson. I'm kind of on that mindset with uh, Aiden O'Connell. He looked great. He looked like a game manager. He didn't make mistakes. Um, the Raiders ran the ball well. You could tell the run design is a little different than what it was a couple weeks ago. I wonder why. You can just see, you just see a different team with the Raiders, and it's a victory. It's a victory Tuesday. Yes, the Giants are shit. Yes, you know 
Danny Dimes was was not playing. He got hurt. Torn ACL. By the way, you hate to see that because, I mean, I think the guy's a gamer. Is he great? No. I think he's a gamer, though. I think he's tough. Um, and I think he was drafted into a really crappy situation, which might have hurt his development. Joe Judge was just a joke and uh, shouldn't have been a coach, a head coach in this league. Um, and I think it hurt Danny. I really do. I think it hurt Daniel Jones. Because you saw a lot of talent, man. And you saw some promise at points. Even with Judge, even with Judge as the head coach. But I, I think they wasted a season. Brian Dable came in. Um, his first year was great. There's just something not clicking, man. The offensive line's not very good. They're allowing a ton of sacks. Um, I hope they can fix that. But it's not all on, on, on Daniel Jones. Is he the guy that's going to be the answer? Probably not. But he's still, he's still a gamer. He's still a good quarterback. They just paid him a ton of money, too. So I don't know how they're going to get away from that contract. That's going to be crazy. So that team is not very good. The Raiders stomped them. The Raiders had a, had a near perfect game, man. Um, they ran the ball well. They dominated on special teams. I think they've been dominating on special teams basically most of the year. Uh, the kicking game, for sure. Uh, defensively, they had three sacks. They forced a couple turnovers. I mean, it was complimentary football. The first game this season we've actually seen complimentary football. Um, and it was the first time this season that the Raiders scored more than 20 points. All of this should be celebrated. Which brings me to our next topic. So we gotta have a, we have to have, you know, positive. Now we're about to have a downer. It'll be positive again, I promise. But now we're gonna have to have a downer, which is also room for celebration. It's embarrassing, so you don't necessarily want to celebrate, but you want to be, you want to feel relieved. Josh McDaniels is no longer the head coach. And there's just something, man, when you when you watch all the reports, man, and and, and don't just take my word for it, man. Go to YouTube. Go to the articles that are out there, Athletic, all that. They'll describe the emotions in the locker room, the way players are reacting the last week or so. They're really happy this guy's gone. Like, I don't know if this guy's a bad person, but you have people getting on YouTube and saying he's a bad person. They just don't like him. They, they lack respect for him because he lacks respect for them. Like, the guy, it's a famous story. He legitimately told the Denver Broncos after trading away Jay Cutler, that he could teach a high school quarterback to win games in this league. That is absolutely false. Not even close to being a true statement. That's how cocky that dude was. Now listen, that was years ago. And I respect that. That was that was well over a decade ago. Reality? He came... He, he Look at what he did, man. He walked into the Raiders. He had a quarterback, a franchise quarterback, one that was established, one that was able to draw a huge free agent, or not free agent, but a big trade like Devontae Adams in. And all he had to do was, was call to his strengths. Not call your offense, not do what Tom Brady did, but if you're a good football coach, you look at your team, you assess the strengths, and you call plays to those strengths. One of the things Derek Carr does better than anybody else in this league is get the ball out, especially to short routes, and he's very accurate. That's something you didn't see a lot of in Josh McDaniel's system, which is absolutely shocking because it felt like, you know, the, the Trent Dilfer saying was death by a thousand cuts is the Tom Brady way. You saw a ton of slants, ton of out routes to, to the slots and stuff. We just didn't see that the last couple of years. It just didn't make sense what we saw. So so this year, the Raiders hadn't didn't score a single game more than 20 points. You have an offensive guru, a guy that's lauded to be an offensive genius, couldn't call a 20-point game in the NFL with Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, an all-pro left tackle. Um, right now, Van Roten, which which I was very critical of him at the beginning of the season, he's been graded out to be the fourth best guard in the league right now. So you have two guys on the offensive line that, that can get it done. You have two core guys. I I mean, I, I do believe that um, left guard, the left guard, all of a sudden, I'm blanking. Sorry, Dylan Parham. Sorry, Dylan Parham. He's going to come into his own. He's been he's been graded pretty well, especially in the run game. You have three guys on that offensive line that can get it done. Yet you don't score 20 points, not once, and you're supposed to be an offensive genius. I think it's pretty obvious. And Antonio Pierce said it himself. The Patriot way was Tom Brady, it was Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Everyone else trying to emulate it doesn't know what they're doing, man. They don't have the cachet. They don't have 
they don't have the ability to walk into a to a free agent you know a free agent's room or a room with a free agent and say hey we're six time Super Bowl champs we have the bet one of the best quarterbacks in the league by far on our roster um, come play for us at a discount and you'll win a championship like they can't do that anymore but that's what they were able to do with Tom Brady at the helm with Bill Belichick rolling the way he was top ten defenses every single year. They're really struggling. Really struggling. They're two and seven. I don't think Bill Belichick gets fired. I, there's just no way that happens after one losing season. Sorry, it, it might be his second coming up here. But regardless, I think that they needed a rebuild after the Tom Brady situation. They might get back to where they are, um, but regardless, you got to appreciate what happened. The reality is, Josh McDaniels won six Super Bowls as a play caller under the greatest NFL coach we've ever seen, who has eight rings, six as a head coach, two as a coordinator, defensive coordinator for the Giants. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady were the Patriot way. Robert Kraft wearing knee pads for those two guys. That was the Patriots way. Josh McDaniels and, and others like Joe Judge, like um, whoever that Dingleberry that was their defensive coordinator went to the Lions for a little bit. They're... They all try Romeo Cornell, which I, I hear he's actually a great dude. Um, Charlie Weiss, all of those guys tried going to other programs and and tried tried to install the Patriot way. It just didn't work. It's not not every place can be be what it is with the Patriots. The Patriots had cachet. Bill Belichick had cachet, and he had a top ten, top five quarterback basically two years into his into his tenure with the New York New England Patriots, and they didn't look back from there. Obviously, six Super Bowls later. That's the reality. Josh McDaniels did nothing. This is what he did as a Raiders coach. Didn't score 20 points once. Um, last year, which is really embarrassing, but we have to say it, uh, the icing on the cake for me was losing to Jeff Saturday, a high school football coach. Guy never coached a down in the NFL. Shows up during the Colts' bye week, after the Colts' bye week, and after they let go of their, their old head coach. And... Uh, Jeff Saturday outsmarts and out they outcoach Josh McDaniels and company. That's really embarrassing, right? I don't know if it could get much worse than that, but it's pretty, pretty damn embarrassing. Uh, a few weeks later, they play the Rams. Rams without a Stafford, injured quarterback. Baker Mayfield has three practices, comes in and beats the Raiders. That's on Josh McDaniels, man. They were outcoached. Every time they lose with Josh McDaniels, they were outcoached. That's how sad the situation was. Uh, this year was pretty pretty evident. I mean, you lost to the Bears. Yes, they had a backup quarterback. So did you. But guess what? Your backup should have been better than theirs. Aiden O'Connell was a better backup than, than Tyson, in my opinion, right now. Bajan has more upside, but, but AOC doesn't really make a lot of mistakes. He had one bad game against a division rival in his first start. You're, you're supposed to expect mistakes from a rookie. And for some reason, Josh McDaniels decided during a press conference to say, yeah, guys, this isn't the preseason. Like, he just knows better than everybody else. Kind of embarrassing. So he's gone. Sigh of relief. You, you, you heard it was a bit of a cancer culture in the Raiders locker room. You heard about a meeting. Players, coaches, staff, building. Players just let loose on Josh McDaniels. He didn't take it very well. It broke him. He didn't take criticism very well. It broke him. It just made it easier for, for Mark Davis to, to pull players aside, ask him, hey, what are you looking into? And these are reports from, you know, guys at The Athletic, um, you know, Tashawn Reed, all, all those guys I really respect. These, these players leak some stuff. They won't give names, of course, and they shouldn't. But Mark Davis had meetings with the main players. Main players all said the, said, said the same thing. It's just not working. Mark Davis made a change, and I applaud him because he's eating a lot of money. It's his own damn fault because he's a dumbass and he's hiring bad people. Was, McJosh, was Josh McDaniels a problem? Yes. Was he the biggest problem the Raiders franchise right now? No. It is Mark Davis, hands down. And I have no problem saying that. I've been saying that for a year and a half. Mark Davis is the issue. He's been a problem for 10 years. Mark Davis will now has a has a eighth different head coach right now in his like 12 years of being an owner since his dad passed and he inherited the team. 
yes, I'm counting interim coaches because they're, they're different personalities running the team. Positive news is I think he got it right, man. I think he appointed the right dude, just like what he did when he when he appointed Rich Bisaccia. The players love him. I hope Mark gives this dude a fair shot. I think he will. Antonio Pierce is no joke. Antonio Pierce is a proven product in the NFL. When you listen to ESPN, when you talk about people that have played with him, Chris Canty, those guys, they're they're all saying the same thing. Antonio Pierce is a great dude. He's extremely intelligent. He's a very successful businessman. He does not have to be coaching right now. He wants to be a part of football. He loves the game of football. The man is a Raider. He was born and bred a Raider. He, was, he grew up in Compton, California. He grew up in Compton when the Raiders were playing there in the Coliseum. The dude's a Raider. He said when Josh McDaniels called him and, and said, hey, I have an opportunity for you. Are you interested? He, he said, hell yeah, because it was his childhood team. The guy looks like a Raider. He was a nasty linebacker, man. He has that infamous play on third down where he stopped Brandon Jackson with a guard on his left shoulder, like literally drug both of them to the ground in a crucial NFC Championship game against Brett Favre in the Packers. The dude's a baller, and he's a Super Bowl champ. He knows what it takes to get gritty. He knows that you don't have to win every single game. You just have to win the ones that matter. Get into the playoffs, and anything could happen. That's exactly what happened in 2007 against the Patriots. They played the best team we'd seen on paper in the NFL. A team that went 18-0, and looking to go 19, the first team to go undefeated ever, and they lost to the to New York Giants with Antonio Pierce playing linebacker for them. The guy knows what he's talking about. He's going to run the ball. They're going to play physical. They're going to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers, period. Their best players. I love his mentality. I mean, he straight up said, you know, it's like this. Um, everybody knew that the Raiders were going to be, or for example, everybody knew that San Francisco was going to throw to Jerry Rice and hand the ball off in the West Coast offense. Everybody knew in Dallas when Jimmy Johnson was the coach. Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin were getting the football. Antonio Pierce is saying, we're doing the same thing. We got Josh Jacobs. We have Devontae Adams, one of the best receivers in the NFL, one of the best running backs in the NFL. Try and stop us. Everyone else ate last week. Aiden O'Connell played a really good game. Distributed the ball. Yes, Devontae was blanketed. But guess what? There was 30 points scored for a reason. Other guys got open. We saw Hunter Renfro get involved. Antonio's not going to play around, man. He's going to play to the strengths of this team. He's got a cachet about him, dude. And I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid necessarily because guess what? It's not going to get easier moving forward, man. It's really not. It's really not going to be easy. Antonio Pierce's next three games are against the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Chiefs. The Raiders' next three games, and I repeat this, are against the Jets, probably a top three defense. Still a good team. If they had Aaron Rodgers, there's probably a two-loss team, maybe. Maybe maybe less. But they play the Jets on a Sunday night. It's at home, but still, it's the Jets. Their defense is crazy good. And we all know that their D-line is really dominant and our offensive line is not very good. Aiden O'Connell might have a rough game. They have a good defense. It's going to be a low-scoring matter. They play the Dolphins. I don't expect us to be in this game. If the Raiders are, great. I just think the Dolphins are a much better roster. I expect that to be a barn burner. Um, at home against the Chiefs. The Chiefs are just a better team, and honestly, what the, the defense is carrying their team this year, which is crazy. Offensively, they're starting to figure it out. They're starting to run the ball better. They're starting to throw the ball more efficiently. Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs are probably going to beat us. There's a good chance the Raiders lose their next three. Right? Two games after that, you have the Vikings and the Chargers. I think both games are winnable. Chargers just aren't that team anymore, man. I don't know what it is. They have a ton of talent. They just can't seem to pull that together. Um... And, and I think a lot of it's Brandon Staley. Yes, they're 500. I respect that. A lot of teams are hovering around 500. But they have a really good quarterback. They have a really good roster. And they just can't seem to get out of their own way. And Brandon Staley is a big, big deal with that. Um, the Chargers took the first game of the year against the Raiders. I would say I, I do think the Raiders have an opportunity to beat them this time around. Um, it will be on December 14th at 715. That could get flexed. 
but I doubt it because it is a division rival game. Um, the Raiders could beat the Vikings. The Raiders could beat the Chargers. So that's two wins right there. That brings them to what? Six and... Pardon me. Six and um, seven. Okay. Sorry, they're... Be six and eight. Six and eight. 14 games. Okay. Then you play the Chiefs again. At Arrowhead on December 25th. Christmas Day. I don't see that ending well. It'll probably be cold. You play the Colts. Winnable game. Play the Broncos. Winnable game. Realistically, guys, and this is my expectation, I love Antonio Pierce. I hope he gets a serious look because it seems as though players are really vested in him and they think he's a good dude. I think this is, there's a possibility that Mark Davis could set a standard and he could have a black president of his team, could have a black general manager, and he could have a black head coach. And it would be such a Raiders thing to do. And I would praise the hell out of Mark Davis for doing that. Give Antonio Pierce a shot. Let Champ Kelly build a team around this guy. Because the team isn't bad right now. It's not great. It isn't bad right now. If they take advantage and don't whiff on some draft picks, they're going to be fine. Build around Aiden O'Connell if he has a solid rest of the season. I'm serious, man. If this team wins four more games and you beat the teams you're supposed to beat, which I think are the Vikings, Colts, and Broncos, what if they squeak past the Chargers in a divisional game? If they win four of the remaining eight games, they go 500 the rest 500 the rest of the way. I I think that's a W, man. I truly do. I th I think that's a W. And I think that's a reason to keep Antonio Pierce because I promise you those are four more games than what the Raiders were going to win with Josh McDaniels at the helm. Period. And you're going to have a hard time convincing me otherwise, man. I think Antonio Pierce could be the guy for the job. I have two guys on my list right now to be the head coach of the Raiders. Jim Harbaugh above anybody else. Because no matter what he does, and I hear me out, man. I know that he's dealing with crap at Michigan, and it could be embarrassing. Here's the reality. San Diego State, one games, 10 games a year. Stanford, one games, 10 plus games a year. Uh, BCS Bowl, Andrew Luck. He attracted Andrew Luck for that matter, right? He was the one that recruited Andrew Luck, got him to go there. Generational player. Goes to the Giant or goes to the Niners. Wins games. Has a Super Bowl appearance. He's in the playoffs for like three straight years before getting canned in like year four or year five because of some drama with him and the GM and, and the quarterback situation. Goes to Michigan. They've done nothing but win since he got there. I don't care what anybody says. No matter where he goes, this guy wins football games because they pound the rock and they play good defense. They pound the rock. They play complimentary football. They play good defense. They have excellent special teams. Every Jim Harbaugh team has that. So that's why I say Jim Harbaugh would be number one on my list. But if he's not feasible, I would more than I would love to see Antonio Pierce get a couple seasons. Because it seems as though these players, especially ones like Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs, really love this guy. He isn't a coordinator. He isn't an offensive guy or a defensive guy. I think he's just a football guy. And he's a leader of men. And that's what the Raiders have been missing for years. In my opinion, that is what I believe the Raiders have been missing for years, and it would make a huge difference. It would make a huge difference for this team if they knew that they had a leader of men at the helm. Rich Passaccia should have been the head coach when John Gruden was, was relieved of duty. Was Should John Gruden have been relieved of duty? I, I'm on the fence about that. At, at the time, because of the racist remarks, I said no. Um, but the more we look into this court case and the more we see all of the privacy that was infringed by the NFL and stories that were obviously planted when he wasn't a Raider, like this, these are stories from 10 years ago, by the way, emails from 10 years ago. I, I don't agree that John Gruden should have been fired, um, but because he was, I think Rich Bisaccia helping the team get to the playoffs should have been the interim coach. If, if Antonio Pierce wins three or four games, and the team is competitive in, in like seven of the eight room six to eight six of the eight remaining games i think he should be asked to come back i think he should be allowed to come back let him if bo hard agree is doing what he's doing and let him fill out his own staff of course he knows people he knows people he can go out and get high football iq guys just let antonio pierce cook man if you can't get jim harboff if jim harboff is out of the question let Antonio Pierce have a, have a couple seasons to see what he can do because he deserves that. He looks like he's a great guy. He's a great leader of men, and I'd love to see it happen. I mean, I'd run through a wall for the guy. I'd play for hard for him right now, straight up. He just seems like a great dude. He seems like a player's guy. 
He's no nonsense. He's going to be real with you, but he's a player's guy. And that's what the Raiders need. This isn't the Patriots West. This is the Vegas Raiders, man. This is the Raider way. This is the Sin City Sports Show presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Kale Henderson. You guys can get at us on our Twitter forums, at Sin City underscore IESR, at Kale underscore Henderson, where we, where we talk all things Vegas sports and sports in general, video games from time to time. If you guys want to catch or rewind of any of our, of any of our shows, check out the Spreaker app, uh, Google Pods, Apple Pods, and uh, Spotify. Spotify being the favorite that I know of right now. Um, Sound quality and all that jazz. Don't miss a show, man. Like, subscribe, follow. Helps the algorithms. As always, folks, really appreciate you tuning in this, this Tuesday evening. We'll see you next week. As always, love, peace, and hair grease.